Hello, 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 and welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today, um, I'm just going to tell you what I did, because I already did everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, but uh, the truck is almost done. I uh, got everything plumbed up, and exhaust is done for the most part. Oil lines are on. Um, yeah, I actually figured out my oil line issue. This is the feed line that I was running. And uh, I just actually got a 4AN union connector to connect two 4AN lines together. So now I have a, too long of an oil line, but um, at least that'll work out. And I went right to the oil cooler spot down on the block down there. And then I just yanked out the uh, factory oil cooler uh, and the lines that went into the radiator. So they just plug into the radiator right down here and uh, just ditched those and then put on a uh, like a block off plate that normally comes on these motors and then you drill and tap it to eighth inch pipe thread and then you can thread your oil feed line right into that. So I got the oil feed line done there and then for the return line um, I just took there's like some here I'll show you I'll crawl under there quick. Okay, so as you can see, I got the return line into the oil pan down there uh, with a, you know, just like a 3 ace pipe thread to a hose barb. And I just drilled and tapped the pan without looking. Um, no grease on the drill bit, no uh, grease on the tap, nothing. Just sent it right through there. Got some aluminum in the motor and uh, same oil still in there. So I probably should change the oil and then that'll be all good. But uh, normally... As you can see, there's a bunch of this wiring right here. This wiring right here is normally sitting where the you know front of the pan is right here, and you actually can't access the front of the oil pan without this wiring out of the way. So I just busted this wiring off, so or these brackets that hold the wiring, and now that that is off, the return line is able to run into the pan. And then I just ran it up. To the turbo now some other things that i did to the truck is uh i actually had to get different spark plug wires because the way that i designed this uh manifold uh, you cannot run the stock spark plug wires because they actually will burn up inside of here i've done it they last about five minutes and then they burn up <laughs> so definitely had to get different spark plug wires and i actually uh, got this trick from a21 bravo and these spark plug wires are actually off of like a 4.3 motor, like the Vortec 4.3, like a, a Blazer or a Jimmy or anything like that. And these wires are actually longer, so you can run them. Uh, well, another thing I did actually is I bent the coils up. I just took a pry bar under each coil and I bent it up so um, I could stick these on and they wouldn't run into the manifold. And then down here, um, I don't know if you guys can see in here or not. But the other end of the spark plugs have uh, 90 degree boots on them, so they won't be, you know, coming up at the manifold like this. You can see as, as you can see here, they're 90s, so that all fits in there good. Uh, I got all these wires on, and then while we're down here, I got the uh, three inch exhaust down to the bottom of the truck, right down to here, and this is where it's coming out so far. And then I also bought. Uh, I bought two 10 inch or I bought two 10 foot uh, sticks of three inch pipe and a uh, thrush turbo muffler like a it's like a cherry bomb uh, but it's an actual muffler it's not just a glass pack uh, three inch in and out on that guy I picked up and yeah I got all those uh, piping over there for the exhaust and I plan on running a full three inch exhaust with a muffler all the way out the back um, and keep this thing as OG as possible. Um, and then me and Michael were joking around earlier because I made this dump tube. And uh, this dump tube I just made out of a old Honda B-Series header. So this header right here was from a B-Series, uh, but it's completely fucked, like it's smashed shut. So I used I used the bends off of like an old header. I always use these as like a pipe to make a wastegate dump tube out of, because it's like the perfect diameter. But I made this dump and it shoots right over by the uh, right front tire over here. So this is just going to be a screamer pipe. The truck's going to be super quiet. Um, so like I got to have a little bit of noise. So I feel I was like, okay, I'm going to leave the dump open because you're not going to really hear it unless you're wide open anyways. So when you want to be quiet, you can still be quiet. And then the, the dump tubes really aren't that loud anyways, just off the wastegate. It's just a, you know, a little, a little bee under the hood just going. Bzzz. So 
that's uh, shooting the right front tire. And uh, I did it this way strategically, so when I'm you know, going around Daytona Speedway with this truck, uh, the, at least this tire will be hot so we can get some good traction in the, uh, you know, around the circle track and uh, the right front tire, you know, of course, because when we're diving into the left-hand corner, the right front needs to have the most traction, you know, it's just how it goes. <clears throat> Another thing I did is I actually had to uh, do different heater hoses and a different coolant setup on the truck because these heater hoses actually busted off on the frickin' heater core back there and I had to burn off the old plastic fittings to expose the metal barb fittings that they come with stock because they put a plastic one on over the metal. It's just completely freaking stupid. Um, so I got new heater hoses installed and it deleted the factory overflow deal that comes on these trucks. It's like an overflow slash radiator cap slash stupid. <laughs> so I deleted that thing and what I did is I actually got this filler neck off of a Dodge Durango. So if you go to the parts store and you say, um, I need a filler neck for a 2000 Dodge Durango with like a 5.9 Hemi, this is what comes up. And it's just a, um, it, it's just a freaking filler neck that goes in, in the top radiator hose and the highest point of the system. So that's what I got here. And then uh, it just uses like a, a Mustang radiator cap. So I had like three of these laying around. Um, and then I just put an overflow down into a smart water bottle, <laughs> um, filled the whole system up last night. Everything's going good there. And then this is the, uh, intake air temp sensor. I did this on a couple of the last builds that I did. Um, this intake temp sensor is actually out of the same vehicle. I got the spark plug wires out of, um, a GMC Jimmy or a 4.3 or anything like that. And I took off the factory... Uh, where is it? This thing. This is like the evap um, purge valve thing, Bob. So I just cut that right off. The the line that goes to it, I just sliced it with a bolt cutter, and then this thing's just bolted into the top of the manifold. I just yanked that thing out, and then it leaves a hole where this intake sensor off the blazers and shit will plug right in. You just gotta shave them down a little bit to get it to fit. Um, and then once it fits, I just put a little JB weld around the intake sensor and then slam it in and forget it. It won't ever come out and uh, it looks factory. So I can just unplug this guy and then boom. Now you need to do this because when you do a turbo kit or whatever, um, the factory mass airflow sensor has uh, the intake temp sensor built into it. So when you delete the mass airflow, you're also deleting the intake air temp sensor, which is why you need to convert it over to the two wire deal like the Jimmies and Grand Am, like any freaking other GM car, they have these style intake sensors. And um, normally the mass airflow is a five wire deal, but if you get the pigtail off of the whatever sensor car you got this off of, it's tan and black wires. You just run the tan and black to the tan and black that's on the mass airflow plug and uh, it, it plugs right up. Okay, I think this, intelligence uh, is up here. I paid forty five hundred bucks for it. Did you? Yep. It included uh, twenty five and a half slicks. That I'll be using on my other car because this will be my daily driver. It's slower than the other one, so. Does this one uh, have that oil pressure mod? Right. That's why you got to be a daily driver here. Mm -hmm. Stupid fucking ACL pumps. Yeah, it's got like 330,000 on it, so the oil pump's a little worn out. Okay. That wasn't me, dude. That's dog. <laughs> Where do we go when they get this I don't know, I'm waiting for Jake. Okay, some other things I did to the truck is obviously I put a front mount intercooler on it and ran the intercooler piping. And on this truck, it was a little bit trickier than normal because this truck actually had some front end damage when I bought it. So the bumpers all pushed in down here and actually caused this to be a little bit more of a headache because I couldn't set the intercooler down farther like I did on some of the other builds I did. Um, and this truck also has a transmission cooler factory and a power steering cooler that sits over here. And I ended up deleting, not deleting, but I cut the brackets off and I have the power steering cooler back here, just zip tied to the AC condenser on the back side instead of sitting up here. And then 
the transmission cooler I did the same thing I cut the mounting brackets off of it and I just zip tied it um, to the uh, hood latch support bar thing so the transmission cooler sits behind the intercooler and then I just zip tied the intercooler for now because there's literally nowhere I can put brackets because this is aluminum and down there I can't actually get under there to put a bolt in there so I just put zip ties on it for now um, it ain't going nowhere it's super solid but uh, had to cut out a couple things um, on the uh, actual bumper to get it to clear like we trimmed this down a little bit and there's like some metal bracing on the bumper that we also trimmed out to get the intercooler to sit down in here but uh, I mean it actually fits pretty goddamn good <laughs> but dude, you wrecked your fins oh dude it's not gonna cool damn it. <laughs> whatever it's gonna leak those that's where air goes to leak So normally this these trucks have like a like it's, it's almost like a plastic sheeting that sits right here and there's like headlight um, bracketry that like holds this headlight in and this one I didn't have to cut any of the brackets that hold it but I had to cut the bottom one because uh, normally like I said there's like a big freaking it's this shit right here I cut all this out so normally there's like a it's like almost like carpet <laughs> and then there's like plastic sheeting that all sits like right in here I just cut all that shit out of there and I think we're just gonna like run a zip tie on this headlight so we can like tie it to something so it doesn't wobble around but uh, once the grills on you literally can't notice I cut any of this out so it's not that big of a deal to me at least um, and it simplifies the intercooler piping so much because otherwise with like the on three kit or anything else they want you to run the intercooler piping down under the bumper under the frame come back around and then freaking just it's just a pain in the ass i did that on my 06 and it took forever to do the intercooler piping but i did this same method on my uh last 99 sierra that truck was like a regular cab short bed 48 it was fucking awesome but michael's just kind of making some uh I don't know what you're doing. What are you doing? What bolt was loose? What bolt? That, that, that one down there holds this piece. And then if that piece is held, we could just zip tie the fucker right there. For this headlight? Yeah. Yeah, fucking mint. Figured it out already. Figured it out. Also, I put some gauges in the truck. Uh, I just got a wide band and a boost gauge. Uh, from And I put a Honda Civic gauge pillar in it, so it doesn't fit the greatest. But it's good enough for what I need it to do. Um, I just got a Harbor Freight boost gauge. And then... AEM wide band like I always run. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So far at least. I also installed some TR6 spark plugs. Uh, they're just a step colder heat range and I gapped them down to 20 thousandths. Like a goddamn tiger. <laughs> I'm just working really hard to push. So who's watching football right now? Not me. Football? That's football. What the fuck's football? We'll go do a 40 yard dash in a half second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that funny? I don't know. Comment below if you think that was funny. <laughs> Bike like you're not funny. YouTube watcher's gonna hate on you. Shucks. What else did I do to this oh, fucking thing? I ordered rods and pistons yesterday. For your car? Yeah. For your little four cylinder? Yeah. When are you going to become an American bald eagle? And when you have a car for five grand that's already going down, I'm going to buy from you. Hmm. Deal? Tempting. Maybe I'll build it for two grand and sell it to you for five. No worries. <laughs> oh, and this whole build, we kept the air conditioning. Oh, so, good. had to, uh, you know, had to leave the AC in there. Why not? Another weird thing is we kept power steering too. Yeah, we kept power steering, air conditioning. You can't really do that on these Hondas quite often. Yeah, I know. That's why you need an American Bald Eagle. No, that's a Honda, isn't it? It's got a Honda gauge cluster. It's got a gauge pod from a yeah, Civic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Whatever. Don't shut up. Oh, I also ripped out the fan shroud. So this is the uh, cooling fan that goes on the end of the uh, water pump and the shroud that covers all of it because obviously you can't be running that shit with an intercooler pipe that comes off because it would it would hit the 
the uh, factory fan that sits on the water pump there. So I'm going to have to get some electric fans and put them on the radiator. But for now, I don't think it's going to be too bad as long as I'm moving um, and not at a standstill for a long time. I don't think I'll have an issue with it overheating yet. Um, I'm, I'm saying for the next day or two until I can get to the junkyard and get some uh, cooling fans. Yeah, now Michael's just drilling a hole and he's probably just going to run a damn zip tie from there to there and this side will be done. We'll just have to plug the headlights actually back in. And then, uh, yeah, I gotta get my blow off valve welded on yet. Um, I need a TIG welder because I don't own one of those. If anybody wants to send me a TIG welder, I would greatly appreciate it. Want to send me a TIG welder, Michael? Can you say something? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll make a deal. What? I'll get you a Teague welder. You have to buy me slicks for the rest of my life. <laughs> That'd be a terrible deal for me. Because <laughs> you'll just be going doing burnouts every day. <laughs> Send you snaps. All right. Hey, <laughs> Balloon pop. All right. Isn't there a song out there that, uh, by some female singer? I can't remember who. But it's two is better than one. Remember that song? Two turbos or... Yeah. Two women? Two is better than one. <laughs> Pretty sure that's a song. My sisters used to listen to it. <laughs> Might be like Kobe Calais or something. Okay guys, so we just got back from the parts store. We had to go make a run so we could uh, get some vacuum lines ran on this thing. And uh, you have to delete some of the PCV stuff on this motor because if you do not, you will push boost into the valve cover and the truck will burn oil. Ask me how I know. Not with this one, but with my first truck, I did that, and she smoked like a choo-choo train with that, uh, like this one still hooked up. So this is, uh, this comes off the throttle body and normally goes to the valve cover down here. Um, and what I do is I just plug it off with a bolt and then leave the valve cover just open to the atmosphere. And then the same thing on the other side, there's a PCV valve that goes in the back of the valve cover and then hooks up into the intake manifold. I rip that hose completely off, leave the valve cover wide open, and then, um, now I have a vacuum spot so I can run this um, port. I just adapted it to like a smaller 730 seconds vacuum line because normally it's like a bigger, I don't know, 3 8 size vacuum line. Um, and I adapted it down to a 730 seconds so I can run a vacuum line off of this to my blow off valve when I get it welded on, which I might do today yet. Um, and then we also ran a vacuum line to the wastegate off the intake manifold. And there's actually a spot right here that has like a, a nipple coming off of it already, but it's capped shut. So if you take a pliers to the end of it and you just crack it, it'll break off and then it'll leave you with like a barb fitting that you can hook up a vacuum line to. And that's what I did for there. And now um, we got the grill on and this uh, little shroud thing. We put all this back on. So the trucks, the grill's back on and everything fits good besides this freaking headlight. Michael, you want to explain yourself? That tab was cut lower down. Hmm. She's got a lazy eye. I think we're going to leave it, though. It gives a character. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think we're going to go actually take this thing for its first drive and see if uh, anything falls off. <laughs> um, I do have a wide band and a boost gauge in the car. The truck is not tuned yet. I'm actually waiting on Matt Happel from Sloppin' Mechanics. Uh, he said that he wanted to help me out uh some way shape or form with hp tuners um i've done a bunch of stuff with hp tuners but you actually have to pay for credits whenever you um like tune a new vehicle or whatever and my laptop that i currently have actually died on me and it doesn't like turn back on and that's the computer that i had the hp tuners onto so i have to like re-get the software and then i have to get credits for the truck so i'm hoping matt can help me out with that and um yeah, I gotta decap the injectors yet and then install my fuel pump, but that's it and then put the exhaust on it There's still a couple things to do, but uh, For the most part it's good to go or good to drive at least I'm gonna go drive it and uh, We'll see if this thing makes a pound and goes lean and blows up. Just want to see like how lean it goes I think with these trucks if you come in to boost it all in the factory tune It'll actually shut the truck right off. So I just want to drive it though and like see kind of how it drives and uh, make sure like nothing's leaking or whatever. So uh, yeah, might fire it up quick and see how shit. That's pretty quiet, honestly, and it's wide open straight pipe right now. 
Okay, guys, so we did some running around. We got the truck running. Uh, we drove it for the first time. Didn't really film any of it. Um, I may film here in a little while of driving the truck, but uh, we got the exhaust um, made for the truck. And it goes all the way back. Uh, this is three inch. It ends right here from the downpipe. And then I have a clamp that holds it together, a band clamp, and then it comes back. This is all straight three inch out to a cherry bomb. Uh, muffler this is like a cherry bomb thrush style muffler uh, i got a hanger here for the hanger that's right in this area of the truck and then we have a bend this is like a 45 there's two 45s that come out and then a long three inch tailpipe that comes out back here uh and then i have another hanger off of the 145 right there and i also have it coupled with a, ba a band clamp at this section right here so it'll band clamp right there and then hang up there. Uh, that way I can still remove all this exhaust if I need to. Um, you know, the tailpipe section is separate from the mid pipe and then the down pipe is separate from the mid pipe as well. These bugs are insane, dude. What the fuck? Joys of living by Lake Winnebago. These lake flies hatch every freaking year. And uh, normally we only get them in spring. You can buy a tennis racket. It's a tennis racket zapper. Have a field day out here. Right? Looks like your mouth's bleeding because your fruit punch or whatever you're drinking. Is it bleeding? You got some Dex cool in your mouth? <laughs> what you do is reuse recycle, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, anyways, uh, yeah, these bugs are annoying. So, I'm trying to get this done before it gets dark and the bugs get worse. So, I'm going to get this thrown on and then we'll maybe cut a clip of it finished. All right, guys, we are out here driving the old T-Ruck, the Yee Yee Mobile, um, and everything is going really good. Truck's in limp mode, converter's locked all the time, it's got no power, and it's fucking 17 0 off the gauge. Uh, and I'm completely not lying about any of this. Uh, it's just, it needs a tune. I gotta tune it, obviously, but I haven't decapped the injectors yet, and I haven't, uh, you know, put a fuel pump or anything in it yet, so I'm gonna be doing that stuff tomorrow. Uh, I just kind of wanted to put a few miles on it, just babying it and just making sure that nothing's going to come apart or the turbo's not going to fall off or anything. Uh, but It sounds like a fucking supercharger. It winds up super fast. Um, and it sounds really good at like not even, not even boost at like five inches of vacuum on the gauge over here. But yeah, look at that tune-up. Look at that tune-up. It runs mint. Uh, it dies at stoplights if I don't have my foot on the gas and uh, a whole other mess of problems. If, uh, the one problem that really bugs me is the fucking converter is locked constantly. Like locked right now and it bangs second and then bangs third. Whatever, I'll tune it. It's not a big deal. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. You know, I actually went through a lot of this stuff with my white Silverado that's on the channel, but you guys didn't see any of that because I wasn't really an official YouTuber then, and now I'm official YouTuber, so you guys get to see everything, right? So, yeah, I'll uh, pick back up when we get home, but clearly, I mean, you guys can hear me clear as day, you know, you can see Christine and everything. Now you can, because she's rude. But, uh, super quiet truck. Like, it, it's, it's quieter than before I turboed it, because before I turboed it, it had a little exhaust leak and stuff, but I fixed the exhaust leak. That's why I turboed it, to fix the exhaust leak. So, yeah. I'll uh, give you a clip of the exhaust when I get back. And I uh, just got some stuff to change the oil. And once I get the oil changed and all that, uh, I'm just gonna go to fucking bed and uh, get right back at it tomorrow. I've been busting my ass all day today on this thing, so uh, I'm super stoked with how uh, the trucks come so far. But uh, get you a little exhaust clip and then we'll end the video. All right, guys, back at home. I uh, just got my oil changed on the truck. I uh, <clears throat> freaking hate stupid GM oil filters. I don't own an oil filter wrench, and uh, I always just try to bare hand it. And it, you can't like bare hand the oil filter on these trucks because the pan is oddly shaped. And uh, I really just need to buy a goddamn oil filter wrench. But I just every time I go to buy one, I'm like, ah, I can just jam a screwdriver in it. I don't got to spend five bucks. Like, no. <laughs> I guess I'm just a cheap ass like that. 
But uh, anyways, the truck is, oh my God, guys. I'm so happy with this thing, honestly. Um, the exhaust is leak free. Like seriously, no holes at all in the exhaust. Uh, all my welds held up pretty good so far and there's no leaks on anything is what I'm trying to get at. Um, turbo is, is doing good. Um, it doesn't spin as freely as a lot of the ones that I've had from VS Racing. But, uh, I mean, literally, I haven't gotten over 2,000 RPM. So, I'm sure once I, like, actually put some RPM to the turbo and whatnot, it'll start to free up a little bit. And once I run it a little while and get it hot and actually spin it, um, I think it will spin more freely. But, like I said, it just seems like it's kind of sticky right now. But I think sometimes they're like that, you know, when they're new and they're still wearing in. Um, so that's just something I'm going to do. And then the blow-off valve, i got to get uh, welded onto the piping still. That's not like a huge concern right now, but I do want to get that done uh, hopefully tomorrow. Got to get the injectors decapped, flow them, reinstall them, put a Walbro 450 fuel pump in this thing, and hook up the laptop. That's the goal for tomorrow. I want to try to pound all that stuff out and get it all done because I want this thing to be back on the road running good because... Um, it is kind of my daily driver. I've been daily driving my hatch with the oil pressure issue for a while now. Just can't be beating on it. Um, so yeah, there's that. But uh, I got a bunch of scrap and shit in the back of my truck that I'm going to be throwing out tomorrow. And I'm going to pick up my new Mustang motor and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, I figured I'd give you guys a quick fire up of the truck um, in a minute. But since you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, I'm just going to ramble for a second. Um, you guys know I've been dealing with anxiety and stuff for, I mean, I've it's been a battle of mine for a long time. And I try to talk to everybody about it because, you know, the more people you talk to about it, you know, the better you can, the, the easier it is to fight it and the easier it is to kind of battle it. And there's just some stuff that's coming up that I really want to do and anxiety's kind of holding me back and I really need to just push push past the anxiety and try to just do what I want to do in life and do all the goals and meet all the goals and stuff that I want to meet. Um, and it's just been a bitch. It's seriously been a bitch. Um, I just got off of the meds. I quit taking my meds and I uh, just kind of been doing some natural stuff with, you know, just exercising. I bought some, I bought a mountain bike. I've been mountain biking and a lot of that stuff guys is seriously helping. I can't even, can't even explain how much like exercise and shit has, you know, help me. And when I'm busting my ass working on my truck, I don't have anxiety. You know what I mean? Like, like if you get a good workout in or a good, you know, get a good sweat going or whatever the case may be, it does, it does help a shitload. And I wanted to kind of throw this in too, because I actually just started, uh, taking supplements. Like you could buy them at Walmart. They're like a, uh, vitamin, sort of a vitamin natural remedy type of thing uh it's still like a pill but uh it's supposed to be natural and it's supposed to be whatever and i started taking l theano uh theanine l theanine i think it's called um and i took one of those damn things and i'm like holy fuck like it it's it's kind of a game changer like it actually made me feel a lot better and uh i'm also taking 5 htp and then omega-3 which is like a a, f a fish oil and then uh, some other like daily vitamins and stuff like that. And I honestly think that they're helping out. So wish me luck, guys. I'm really trying to battle through this and, and get her dialed in as much as I can. Uh, I got to tune my brain up as much as I can tune a freaking gasoline engine. But uh, all right, well, n enough with the boring bullshit. Let's, uh, let's fire this damn truck up so you guys can hear the exhaust. Honestly, I don't even know if I did a fire up video. I probably already did, but... Uh, it idles really shitty right now, but... It's super quiet. Like, I'm standing right by the end of the exhaust, and you can hear me clear as day, probably, so... <laughs> yeah. Super, super awesome. Just needs a tune. So, we'll get that dialed in. And we'll get back at you for another video tomorrow, hopefully. Um, sorry about the delay. It's been two days and people are freaking out at me. Um, but uh, just been busy doing stuff and dealing with life. You know what I mean? Life's a bitch sometimes, guys. Uh, but anywho, thank you for watching the video. 
Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, check out Sloppy Mechanics if you guys haven't already. He's going to be helping me out. I've done a bunch of HP Tuner stuff in the past, but uh, it's been about a year since I've messed with it, so I'm kind of just going to get refreshed with one of his base tunes, and then probably show you guys part of the process. So be sure to look forward to that, and uh, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. Goodbye. See you later. Have a great night. See ya.